there's a thing that happens in that town, in that area, where the the people that think outside of the norm say it in like whispered, hushed tones. Mm -hmm. There's a, a certain ideology that's attached to that city, and it's not logical. It's a kooky, wacky, uh, completely insulated left-wing view of the world, and they enforce it with an iron fist. And if you're not on that team, you don't get booked for things. You don't get picked for things. If you're someone who has uh, conservative leanings or you talk about conservative, there's projects you're never going to get. You're never going to be involved with the people will uh, they'll malign you and without knowing you at all, be openly prejudiced about you. And uh, so no one does it. So everyone who goes over there, who's just like desperately trying to make it, they're desperately trying to get in movies. They're desperately trying to, to get a recording deal, whatever it is, they're desperately trying to do. Mm -hmm. The last thing they want to do is do something and talk about something that's going to politically get them at odds with the people that run the studios. Mm -hmm. So no one does. Everybody just follows the same sort of wacky ideology that these people take from the universities. They go straight into working as a PA and straight into working for executives and producers and all of those people are indoctrinated. They're all in this wild ass cult of weirdness. And then you have people that move there to try to make it. And these people are just always going on auditions. So they're always like, please choose me, please choose me. And no, they didn't choose me. And so you're trying to be friends with mm -hmm, the people mm -hmm, who choose people. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You're trying to get them into parties, mm -hmm, trying mm -hmm. to introduce them to other people. You're trying to be around other famous oh, people. Getting anxiety. So that, this just person's about been chosen. Mm -hmm. I got to be around the chosen mm -hmm, person. Mm -hmm. We're going to go to the chosen person's party. Yep. Maybe we can get chosen. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. they, so you get this like overwhelming anxiety that fills the fucking city. Yeah. And then now you have TikTokers and influencers and all these people that are just trying to do anything to get famous. Yeah. And that the reality stars and all that started it all off and the fucking Real Housewives and all that wacky shit. You get away from that. You're like, oh, there's real people out there. There's real people. That's a storm of anxiety. Uh -huh, and absolutely. Just a hurricane of confusion and Zoloft and, and wah! Uh -huh. And everyone's losing their mind and everyone's in therapy and everyone's nuts and everyone's trans. It's out of touch. Yeah. It's just a crazed cult. Yeah, it's like, you know, you start out as a stand-up comedian and you are trying to, you know, poke uh, holes in the, you know, the absurdity of the world and you're saying things that are not being said on stage. And then, you know, as, you know, you all of a sudden get brought into, and I'm sort of saying the, the every stand-up comedian, every outlier, every person that's a doing something different, a punk rocker, a skateboarder, a, my goofy show was so out, out there when I was making it. And I was making it, I was rebelling against, you know, in Canada, in my little little public access show, I was kind of trying to rebel against what obviously seems like a formulaic mainstream way of thinking to create art, right? And then you move to Los Angeles because, well, the show got on MTV. I end up moving to Los Angeles. Now you're, I'm talking about myself now. Trans. All of a sudden being asked to go on, um, you know, the show, The Tonight Show, Saturday Night Live, and you're on these shows. And, you know, I was sort of sort of a bit of a naive, you know, moron, basically, you know, like in, 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 in purposefully so. I would go on these shows and try to go nuts, right, and try to do something crazy and just try to sort of, <laughs> sort of almost disrupt the whole format of it, right, in those first couple of years – as a naive person who didn't understand how Hollywood worked. And I was just, I, you know, I went on, I had a similar thing to our last appearance here on Jay Leno. I went on Jay Leno when uh, I had a film coming out. I went on Jay Leno and, and uh, we, I came up with this bit. Let me roll the, the bar. They had a, you know, remember they had the bar cart, the J bar. Mm -hmm. I'll roll it out on stage during the show and then I'll do a shot of Jaeger with, with Jay. You know, Jay doesn't, this is a crazy story. I probably told you this before, but I, I do a shot of Jaeger with, with, with Jay, and Jay doesn't drink. So he said, okay, well, I'll throw it over my shoulder, right? So we go there, and I'm with my, my buddy who's, you know, you, you know, I have a buddy who, like, pushes you further into the darkness, right? Mm. Like, you, you know, like, you know, you, 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 got a, you got a bad idea, and he pushes you further and makes it even worse. Use so, the force. Yeah. So we're in the green room getting ready. I'm in the green room with my buddy getting ready to go on the show, and, and he goes, do a shot now before you go on. I'm like, oh. Okay, so I do a shot now before I go on, right? And get ready to go on. The, the, the bit's all approved with The Tonight Show, you know? It's, it's a gag. They know I'm doing real Jagger, right? 
But it wasn't planned that I would do a shot before I go on. He goes, do another shot before you go on. Two shots. Two shots. Do another one. So now I walk out, I'm three shots in before the show even starts. Oh boy, you're yeah. hammered. Well, pretty then, quickly. Then, yeah, and then I got out there and I did a shot and the audience goes crazy and cheers, right? And so then I do another shot and so I end up doing like oh. way too many shots and it kind of ended up very similarly to oh. our last, uh, our last uh, conversation here. And, uh, and it, was, it was actually pretty hilarious. Uh, it was one of those things where, you know, it, it did get out of control. The next day... Uh, the, there was a, the, the New York Post, it's had my picture and it said, dead drunk. You know, it was just like one of those. Uh, and, uh, you know, Jay called me at home the next day. Are you okay, man? You know, really kind of went up. But then, you know, then that was sort of the beginning of me realizing, oh, you know, you can't. <laughs> Why Tom Green went on Leno and deliberately got drunk. Yeah. And, and, you know, in hindsight, I go, well, that was, you know, kind of the outrageous kind of young version of me that I was doing on the show that made perfect sense to do that for a gag. Uh, but then, you know, the naive kid in me didn't understand, well, you know, a lot of people in Hollywood did not understand that and then got mad in the movie people studio. People got mad at you? Well, like the movie studio, I was on promoting a movie and they were like, oh, we don't want you to go any more talk shows for the movie. I'm like, well, I was like, well what? I was, it was a joke. I was obviously, it was a joke. And they're, they're not interpreting it as a joke. They're interpreting it as, as me being kind of out, out of control. control. Which, yeah, exactly. But it was a, it was a, a manufactured out of control. I was out of control, but it was planned. It was planned <laughs> confusion, right? So, but that kind of subtlety didn't really, uh, didn't really kind of pass the the smell test. So, so then you start to go, oh, geez, I better tone it down a little bit. You know, better be better, better tone it down a little bit because this, and, and you sort of end up falling into that feeling where all of a sudden you're, like you said, going to an audition or driving out to a meeting and. Or trying just, to, trying just to, trying being to a person that you're not. Yeah, exactly. Like if to, you're hosting a late night talk show yeah. and now all of a sudden yeah. you're this sort of wearing a tie, yeah. this odd mm -hmm. button down. And trying to yeah. make something that they like mm -hmm. and fit into mm -hmm. their mold and, you know, try to get your own little creative shots off within that mold. But no longer are you actually being purely yourself. Right. right. And, uh, and you can't. And, it's and not so even possible. And, you know, you end up living there for 20 years, end up living there for 20 years, and it becomes normal pretty quickly, right? And then, mm. and then you sort of slowly forget, oh, you know, oh, this is just the way it works, I guess, now. And then uh, eventually, you know, one day you go, I'm getting out of here. And I, I got to say, uh, you know, when you, when you moved here, it was a bit of a... Uh, a, a light bulb, I think, for me too. It was inspiring for me because I, I, I sort of realized, oh, look at that, Joe's leaving. You know, because you, you you were always at the comedy store, the, all the clubs. It was a scene in L.A., and you're thinking, wow, like Joe, Joe's just going to go do it on his own and just turn his back on this whole infrastructure here. And I was like, yeah, you can do that. You don't have to be here. And and it was really inspiring, and you know, it, and it inspired a lot of people.